The Cult of Nurgle Nurgle is the mighty Lord of Decay, who presides over all physical corruption and morbidity in creation. Disease and putrefaction, the inevitable entropic decline of all things, are the favors it bestows upon the universe. It is to free themselves from despair. The eternal mortal dread of disease, starvation, and death that humans and other mortals turn to the Plague Lord. Despite its horrific appearance, Nurgle is a warm, welcoming god who prides itself on the achievements of its followers, gifting them with its most hideous diseases even as it protects them from all pain and the cold sleep of death. The fear of death can be found in the hearts of all the sentient beings of the universe, and so there is no shortage of mortals of every species present in the galaxy willing to sacrifice their immortal souls in return for the corrupted preservation of their physical bodies for all time. Compared to the other Chaos Gods, Many of Nurgle's followers worship it by no choice of their own. The taint of Nurgle spreads readily among beasts and humanoids alike, and the awful arcane illness known as Nurgle's Rot may strike even the strongest person and cause him or her to be outcast as a leper. Despite the nature of its influence, Nurgle takes an interest in the victims of the diseases it unleashes, which it considers to be gifts, jovially caring for them in a manner similar to a loving grandfather, for which reason it is frequently referred to as Grandfather Nurgle by its servants. This also causes some that would have otherwise never been infected to seek out disease and even poison themselves to earn its favor. The deranged worshippers of the Lord of Pestilence say that it concocts diverse contagions to inflict on the material universe for its amusement, and many of the most infectious and horrible diseases are Nurgle's proudest creations. It is their belief that those who die caught in the grip of one of Nurgle's terrible poxes are swept directly to its domain, the land of the Plague Lord. Those that sing the praises of it loud enough are sometimes spared so that they can spread its blessings further, for the Church of the Fly Lord is always open to all. Nurgle has many supplicants, but there are few with the fortitude to declare themselves as its champions. The few that can survive the great corruptor's manifold blessings exhibit a feverish, morbid energy and a preternatural resistance to physical damage. Those that fashion themselves champions of Nurgle represent a dire threat to densely populated worlds where close-packed populations are vulnerable to a single contagion. Ships in the void are particularly vulnerable to disease, and many dying crews have beseeched the Lord of Decay for its intercession. Such was the fate of the Death Guard Space Marine Legion when it became marooned in the warp on the long journey to Terra during the Horus Heresy. While they lay becalmed in the Immaterium, a mysterious contagion spread from one void ship to the next until the entire fleet was infected. Even the reinforced transhuman physiology of the Space Marines could not fight off the dire plague as it bloated the guts, distended the flesh, and rotted its victims from the inside. It is said that when even the Legion's Primarch, Mortarion, fell victim to the plague, he cried out to the ruiner's powers of chaos in his delirium, 
his desperation to save himself and his legion called forth Nurgle, and Mortarion became his greatest champion and demon prince. These Chaos Space Marines became known as the Plague Marines, Nurgle's most potent and prized mortal servants. Thus, the Death Guard Legion has enjoyed the favor of Nurgle for the last 10,000 standard years. The Allure of Nurgle Entropy is all-consuming, fed by all struggles against it. Thus, even to hope is to despair. So, despair, and in your desperation, find purpose. From Zlan's The Racked, a speaker of rot. Life anywhere in the unfeeling galaxy is harsh, miserable, and full of pain and suffering. Service to an uncaring god emperor or an eldritch and absent cosmic deity is ultimately empty and devoid of meaning. Men live and die, and for what? For others to stand on their graves and proselytize. Where is the reward in that? For those who accept the boundless gifts of the Father of Plays, however, everlasting hope is the ultimate reward. Decay is unavoidable. Bolters rust, the shells they fire are spent, and the fingers that pull their trigger wear down with the passing of time and repeated action. Over the course of their lives, mortals sustain injuries, become infected, sicken and succumb to their wounds, or more simply, to age. It is impossible to escape deterioration, and yet, people try. The struggle to forestall decay moves people to action. It motivates them to greatness. It gives them hope that better times lie ahead. Endless possibilities in a universe that seemingly knows only certain crushing doom. It is the Plague Lord that brings light to the darkness. It is Nurgle that gives weak mortals the strength to resist the lies of the Ecclesiarchy and others. It is the embracing Grandfather Nurgle who encourages its followers to defy the doom of mortal corruption and instead use it as a source of strength and inspiration. In the marked squares of backward planets and in the drone-filled cathedrals of the chapters of the Adeptus Ministorum, preachers spew their lies upon an unsuspecting and dim-witted flock. They warn against corruption of the soul and filth of the spirit. They admonish their listeners that to turn from their faith is to join the ranks of the lost and the damned. Their work cannot encompass the horror of the truth. All Chaos Gods have a dual nature, but Nurgle, more so than any other of the Runer's powers, understands that the supposedly separate elements of its essence actually work together in a self-sustaining cycle rather than standing apart from one another as different explanations of the same thing. Korn, for instance, is a god of bloodshed and killing, of utter carnage, and also one of martial honor and a sense of accomplishment or betterment. These two halves can be seen as two sides of the same coin, but the coin must be flipped to view and appreciate its obverse. But this coin is illusory. There is no divide between its two faces, no beginning and no end. The coin is naught but a feeble mortal metaphor for the truth of Nurgle's influence. On one side there is decay, death and disease. What would be on the other side of this coin is in fact 
part and parcel of the first side. Hope, rebirth, resistance and growth all arise directly from facing death and decay. The seers of the Asuriani craft worlds and the inquisitors of the Imperium will never share this truth with the weak-minded fools who drink in their lies like mother's milk. For a Chaos God, Nurgle's actions seem oddly harmonious, caring even. To receive the blessings of Nurgle, all one has to do is want to live and be willing to do whatever it takes to cling to that life. All else follows naturally from there. Worshippers of Korn must push toward ever greater levels of destruction and carnage despite the risks to themselves or even to their allies. Those who devote themselves to Zeej must deny their lot in life and seek to change everything, never appreciating what they have. Followers of Slanesh seek to escape reality in a blur of sensation and self-delusion. And yet, all that is required to feel the caring touch of Nurgle is to see life for what it is, and to want to make the most of it. All that is needed is faith in the future provided by Nurgle. While an invitation to stroll down its pox-strewn path should be welcomed as an honor, not all see it as such. Wasting away under the seemingly malign influence of a skin-eating disease is painful to the afflicted and often repulsive to those around them. When a child's flesh turns a sickly pale green and her eyes glaze over and become dull, milky, unseeing orbs, her father comes to know that he is powerless to prevent her suffering. Seeing a friend's battlefield wound blacken and ooze blood-tinged pus, the stench of its rot choking the air of a barracks, is a reminder of the frailty of all mortals. If this decay comes at the hands of Nurgle, via the thrust of a rusted blade or the unleashing of a supernatural plague, many will curse its name. For those who are unable to see that this pain and suffering lifts the veil that hides the truth of life and death from them, such moments and visions are terrifying. Some blessed mortals, however, are able to look beyond the putrescence and see the decay for what it is, a gift from the Lord of All. This gift regardless of the form it takes, opens eyes even as it liquefies them. It simultaneously atrophies the leg muscles of its recipients and gives them the strength to march toward a greater purpose. It is Nurgle's great ambition to speed this universe towards its ultimate end by eroding the foundations of reality much as a disease can erode the spirits and bodies of those infected. Through its careful and ceaseless experimentations begun within its wondrous garden in the realm of chaos and then unleashed throughout the galaxy, the pillars that support the framework of existence are slowly but surely weakened. There will come a time when they collapse entirely and the universe will begin a massive transformation. The old ways will be swept aside like a troublesome fly, all that was will cease to be, and from the rotted ruins a new and glorious reality will emerge one dominated by Nurgle and its beloved children. Those who walk with it and aid it in bringing about this great corruption, as Nurgle calls it, do so with joy in their hearts. They know that Nurgle's victory is assured and that when all things come to an end and life begins anew, 
they will have helped make it so. This makes theirs a life worth living, despite and because of the gifts of their caring master. Nurglish Corruption Rejoice, children! Your father brings you hope in your darkest hour. Let those who would accept his gifts come forth and receive the blessings of the Lord of Decay. Cast away your crutches and doubts. Put aside beliefs in a false master who fills your hearts with lies, sorrow, and regrets. Embrace instead the glorious gifts of rot and decay. Revel in the beauty of putrescence and be reborn a living symbol of perseverance. From the demon prince, Galfarth, addressing the diseased inhabitants of the conquered city of Kulis Seven. Nurgle, the Plague Lord, is the psychic manifestation of the most predominant collective fear of all sentient beings, the fear of death. Nurgle is the embodiment of disease, decay, and the death these states ultimately bring to all living things. Most Nurglites rarely end up in the service of the Plague Lord willingly, for those who contract a deadly disease or are forced to face the reality of their own mortality, Nurgle offers a potential escape from the painful ravages of illness or an untimely death. In return for an individual's soul and their eternal damnation. Among all the major intelligent species of the galaxy, humanity fears death and the onset of non-existence the most, and it is humans who have always been the majority of the Plague Lord's servants. In return for their allegiance and service, it offers its worshippers complete immunity to all disease and pain by infecting them with every natural disease in existence and many that are unnatural extensions into real space of the arcane power of chaos. Champions of Nurgle can become among the most powerful chaos servants in the galaxy, though they will also be afflicted with some of the most all-encompassing and disgusting physical mutations that chaos can bestow. Nurglites become swollen, walking bags of pus and putrescence, their very skin swelling and rotting from their bones even as they continuously leak organic fluids infected with every loathsome bacteria, virus, fungus and infectious agent that can be conjured by the imagination. In return, Nurglites are completely immune to these diseases, or any disease, and their rotting bodies also become physically robust, capable of withstanding injuries and damage that would destroy even those enjoying the most robust health. At the same time, despite their seeming infirmity, those who have sworn their souls to Nurgle feel no pain. In fact, quite the opposite. For many Nurglites report feeling a sense of power and almost narcotic-like well-being that is far more pleasurable than they felt before the mutations began. And Nurgle's relationship with its brother gods. Nurgle is the age-old enemy of the Chaos God Zeech, the Lord of Change. Their animating psychic energies come from diametrically opposing mortal emotions and beliefs. Zeech's power derives from hope and the capacity of mortals to change their fortunes, while Nurgle's comes from defiance, born out of despair and hopelessness at the inevitability of death. 
The followers of Nurgle often pit themselves against those of Zinj in complex political intrigues in the mortal realm, forever attempting to mire its schemes for change in dull-minded conservatism and parochial self-interest. The corrupting influence of Nurgle's servants is often successful in thwarting the architect of fate and they erode its accomplishments constantly, safe in the knowledge that whatever survives the collapse into entropy becomes their inheritance. Nurgle and Zinj are in many ways opposed, for at the heart of the matter, the changer of ways seeks to build ever more complex and improbable webs of power while Nurgle embodies continuous growth, destruction, and renewal. The war between the two powers is ceaseless and played out across countless realities. That which Zinj creates and evolves to undreamed of heights of complexity and insane perfection, Nurgle's servants gnaw away at, seeking to bring the entire edifice toppling down so that new growth can emerge from the fecund grave.